What's up, everybody? Brett Okamoto from ESPN alongside the UFC's welterweight king, the African gorilla, Kamaru Usman, who uh, I got a, a lot of questions for. But first and foremost, I mean, the last time you and I spoke, one of the com one of the topics that came up is uh, your um, your decision to not wear shirts very often. And now here you are. <laughs> you got you got the threads on. What, what, what's what's the deal there? I mean, I thought we were. I mean, it's it's, it's even warmer now than it was last time I talked to you. We're in. Uh, we're almost in June now. What's going on? <laughs> I know. You know. Um, you know that really hurt my feelings last time. You know, I was I was. I was broken up about that for a while, you know. So <laughs> since then, I've I've I haven't gone anywhere without a shirt on. You know, I've yeah. always kept a shirt on, and you know, it seems better. I I just I feel like I don't get as much of attention though. So I would imagine so. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of a letdown, but it is what it is. I'll do it for you, Brett. No, dude, don't don't let me make you feel insecure. I mean, I never said it didn't look great. I was just curious as to you know why so we had to saying... let it. Let it, it out there great. all the time. So, so hey, you're saying it looked great? Do you? You're the champ, man. You make the calls. <laughs> you want you want to go shirtless? Take it off. <laughs> where uh, where are we where are we talking to you right now? Where are you at? Um, I am in Denver, actually. Uh, yeah, another reason why I got the shirt on. You know, it's uh, it's not as cold as in South Florida, but yeah, I'm in Denver right now. Okay. When uh, when did you get to Denver? <sighs> um yesterday 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 yeah okay um, what are we doing in denver i mean obviously everybody knows you as a south florida guy throughout your entire fight career what what's uh what's going on on in denver yeah i'm i'm of course i'm a south florida guy you know south florida is my home you know and that's you know that's where i i, I started you know just getting a little different feel you know i'm here for a couple of weeks getting a different feel and, and we'll see what happens. But you know, everyone knows South Florida is my home. What are we preparing for, man? I mean, that's, that's the obvious question, right? I mean, last time I spoke to you, you said unequivocally, hundred percent, Jorge Masvidal is my next opponent. Um, right. Are we, are we still there? What is the time frame? Who are you fighting? When are you fighting? Where are you fighting? Brett, it, it, it's, that's the craziest thing right now. Like you guys see this whole circus that's going on. Um, I've been ready to fight since and that's since April, Brett, I've been ready to fight. Like I, I, I would, I've been training since February, and and I've been, uh, you know, when I, I, that situation was unfolding with Habib not being able to come back in the country. You know, you saw it. I called, I called Dana up. Hey, April eighteenth, you need me, my man. Let's do it. You know, I'm ready to rumble for the right price. I'm ready to rumble. I mm -hmm. got in the gym, started cutting weight. I, I could have made the weight easy, but. Their side pulled out. As we saw later on, he came out and said, oh, we, we were different with the numbers and this and that. So they told you they pulled out. May 9th, same thing. I called them like, hey, I'm ready to go. Let me know what we need to get done to get, get this going. I'm ready to rumble for the right price. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess his, I don't know what negotiations were going on with them or how far they went on that, but didn't end up happening. June, I'm throwing my hat in again. I'm ready to go. What's up? You just, I'm ready. The champ is ready to go. Let, let's go. You know, and and now, you know, this whole situation, I'm ready for July or whatever is going on. But, you know, now they're coming out saying, oh, well, we want to look at this guy and this. Like, in, in the history, when have you seen a number one contender say, you know what? We're not going to take the fight to become the champion of the world and be the yeah. star that we always wanted to be. Why would so anyone do that? Oh, you're just trying to get some money because you think that's an easier fight for you? The, the guy that you kind of just beat playing around, you thought that was a, that's a better fight for you? Hmm. What's it, why is that a better fight than being the champion of the world? Yeah. Oh, because you know that eh, the champ of the world is going to beat out of me, and I have nothing that I can do about it. So you know what? Let me go over here and try to get some easy money. You know, and and so and I'm 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 like you know what it is what it is I don't care who it is they can drag someone's mom out of the basement I'm ready to rumble for the right price I don't care who it is if it's if if, if it's Connor that, that's why I said Connor Connor this would be history like I know a lot of people are trying to kind of get on it and say oh Connor doesn't deserve it okay but the next guy that's deserving of the fight would be Leon Edwards he can't get in the country so mm -hmm. so what. Mm -hmm. well, if Connor can make this fight happen, why wouldn't we fight Connor? He just fought at 170. He looked great. Mm -hmm. Like, like 
Cowboy Cerrone beat a lot of guys that were ranked in, in, at 170. Yeah. You know, he did very well at 170. <clears throat> And, and, and Connor went out there and, and you know, and starched him. I mean, obviously, I, I like Cowboy. Cowboy's my guy. But Connor went out there and got the job done in less than a minute. So how could people sit here and say that Connor does, is not deserved? And, and this is – we're about making history here. He's saying that he's the pound-for-pound pound greatest of all time across yep. three divisions. Yep. This is your chance to prove it. Go out there and win the third belt yep. in the third division. So yep. why wouldn't we make that fight? I'm going to give him the opportunity. If Connor wants it, let's do it. But Connor's quiet now. <laughs> Why is Connor quiet? Who says no to a title shot? I've never seen this in history where who says no when the champ says come and get your title shot? Unless you know you have no chance in hell of winning, that this mm. might change the this might change the landscape of your fighting career ever. That's the only chance I can see people saying, you know what? I'm gonna pass on that title shot right there. Yeah. Yeah, man. I uh, I remember talking to you after you won the belt and you said one of the best things about holding this belt is that I know that everybody has to come to me now. Everyone's going to want to fight me. And now here we are after uh, one title <laughs> defense and you're saying the number one contenders don't want to fight you. So, so maybe you were wrong about that one. I was definitely wrong about that one. You know, I've, been, I've been the boogeyman of the welterweight division for a long, long, long time. And I'm still having problems getting fights as a champion. Like, no. if that doesn't tell you I'm the most dangerous and well-rounded welterweight there's ever been, I don't know what is. Uh, I'm hoping to talk to Dana Dana White this week. You know, I, as I'm sure you know, the fights are back. They're, they're most likely going to be here in Vegas. Going to try to uh, get some of Dana White's time. But can you tell me, I mean, have you talked to the UFC? Have you talked to Dana? Have you talked to Hunter? Have you talked to Sean? What, what, is, their, what is their take on this whole situation? No, I haven't talked to them. Uh, you know, I, I don't particularly talk to them i let my manager do the do that for me uh you know he does a great job of any you know of talking to them and, and getting the deals done and things like that so i let him handle all that um my job is to the rumble for the right price and you know when they they pull my ticket and call my number i get in there and i, I make it happen so you know i've been ready like i said i've been ready since april we just can't get these guys to commit and step in there and uh, and try to take this belt you know, you mentioned uh, for the right price three or four times now already in this interview. What, what you need to have some conversations with UFC? Does your contract need to be opened up? No, I mean, there's always a conversation to be had, of course. You know, and, and that's when you when you become the champion. You know, the landscape of things change, and mm -hmm. um, you know that's it. You know, it's just a, a little conversation that needs to be had if if there's a serious fight on the table, but. You know, we can't get anybody to commit to fight to a fight. So, mm -hmm. you know, we can't even have those conversations if we can't get somebody to commit to a fight. So, you know, we, we're looking to hopefully get somebody to commit to a fight. And, and you know, and my manager is going to do what he does best. Which fight uh, of any of them would you want the most right now? Is it still Jorge or now does the would idea I, of, of Connor kind of kind of creep up and, and pass that one? <sighs> Which fight do I want the most? Like for me, I see no face. It, to be honest, it, it doesn't mean anything. They don't mean anything to me. Mm -hmm. They're all the same. When I step in there, I'm going to hit them all with the same intensity. And um, obviously, uh, the Masvidal, because so many people were on that and so many people felt like that made sense, which, you know, I didn't think it made sense from the start, to be honest with you. But so many people were buying into the hype and they said, oh, he's the next contender and this, this and that. All right, I'll give you what you want. You want Masvidal? All right, I'll give you Masvidal. So I said, all right, mm -hmm. let's make it happen. And then now he's <laughs> sweet. You know what, Nate, let's run it back. What? <laughs> Who says no to a title shot? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if Con Connor came out, I didn't say anything about Connor. Connor's the one who came out and said, you know, am I going and take over that 170 division? Yeah, well, here's, he your chance. here's your chance, Mr. McGregor. You want, you want that 170 division? Here's your title shot. But I haven't heard anything. It's, it's just silence now. All these guys are it's silent. What, what's going on? Why is it silent? Kamara, you versus Conor McGregor, who has fought as low as 145 pounds, who's had some some, who's shown that he's had a little bit of problems with a wrestler in Habib Nurmagomedov. It, it is a fight between you and Conor a competitive fight? You, you're an analyst sometimes for ESPN. If you're breaking that fight down, Kamara versus Conor, how competitive is it? Yeah, it, it is a competitive fight. Like a lot of people are, are kind of going on the side. Oh, you you've been at 170 and Connors fought as low as 145. I wrestled at 145. What are people talking about? I wrestled at 145 and then I grew into a 170 pound fighter. 
Mm-hmm. Connor fought at 145, and then he grew into a welterweight fighter. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, some people might still say, oh, yeah, he's too small, but Masvidal was a, a, a middle, a lightweight fighter. Mm-hmm. You know, RDA was a lightweight fighter. You know, Nate Diaz was a lightweight fighter. Anthony Pettis mm-hmm. was a lightweight fighter and fought as low yeah. as 145, came up to welterweight and knocked out Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. You know, so I think it's just it's ridiculous for people to just sit here and say, and that's the thing too. A fight is a fight. A lot of the people who are saying, "Oh, this is not competitive," uh, are a lot of just fans standing on the outside. You know, mm-hmm. uh, a, a fight is a fight. Anything can happen in the fight. You know, and and Connor's got that 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 beautiful left hand that he feels that he could you know deliver and, and no, he he said himself, nobody can take that left hand. You know, I, I'd like to I like to test that. I'd like to see if uh, if he can throw that left hand, if he can make that happen. So, you know, I think it's crazy that people are saying it's not going to be competitive. The the real the real people know <laughs> how that would go down. The real people know. If you're asking me, am I going to win? Do I think I can win that fight? I can beat anybody on the planet. That yeah. weighs 170. <laughs> yeah. I can beat anybody on the planet. So, would, uh, of course, I'm going to say that. Would you be tempted at all to try to knock him out if the fight if the fight did come together? Absolutely. Uh, rather than rather than wrestling, like maybe in the first round, if you felt like I can take this guy down, but but Absolutely. would there be part of you that would want to knock him out? Well, first of all, it's not that I can take this guy down. I can absolutely take him down if I want to. I can take anybody down if I want to. Tyron Willie is a two-time Division One All-American wrestler, probably the best credentialed wrestler in the UFC right now, minus Ben Askren on paper, mm-hmm. you know, and we saw that win. Um, so it, it's not it's not based on that. Like I can absolutely take anybody down that I choose to take down. I will even sign a contract with Conor McGregor. I'll tell him, you know what? We'll put it in the contract, first round or second round. I'm not gonna take you down. If you want to do that, we'll put it in the contract. I'm not gonna take you down. Like the the crazy thing is that people are still under the impression that all I can do is wrestle. Mm-hmm. Like that's what's that's what's crazy to me. In my last fight, I could have taken this guy down. I chose not to. I chose to stand there and, and, and beat him up. Mm-hmm. You know, with Woodley, when I wanted to stand, I stood with Woodley and, and almost got him out of there. You know, yeah. the fight before that, RDA, I stood with him a, a ton, and I almost got him out of there in that last round. Yeah. You know, Damian Maya, I stood with him all five rounds. Like, you know, like for people to, to, to really still say that, oh, you're going to try to take him down. Hey, yeah, if I want to take him down, I've said it before. If I want you down, I'll take you down. That's that's not a there's no if ands and buts about that. But if I want to stand and strike with you, absolutely. Am I going to try to knock Conor McGregor out? Absolutely. I'm going to try to knock his head off his effing shoulders. Hmm. Well, I mean, obviously, you signing a contract that says you wouldn't take him down in the first two rounds would be pretty entertaining. I would um, absolutely, I, I would absolutely sign that contract. Absolutely. As a fight fan, I wouldn't mind seeing it. But let's say let's say Conor stays quiet. Let's say this isn't an, an, a, he will. a title shot that he wants. Let's say Jorge decides to continue to pursue Nate. I know that Nate would love to fight him again. So let's say those two are off the table. What does that mean for you? Like like a rematch with Colby, Tyron, Gilbert Burns, a guy that you know well, obviously, the winner of that fight. I mean, are, 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 would any of those fights do anything for you? But, but listen, this this is this is what kind of it, it's it's kind of annoying to me. Is a lot of people are saying, oh, with rematch with Colby, rematch with Colby. Like, why the does Kobe deserve a rematch? Like, was he the champion that I just took the belt off of that he deserves a rematch? Like, that's the craziest thing to me. A contender fights for the belt, gets knocked out, and then everyone's like, oh, rematch? <laughs> for what? Mm. You know? But I absolutely, down the line, I would absolutely love to fight him again because it was a fun fight. Like, I had as much fun in that fight as everybody had in watching the fight. You mm. know? So it was a fun fight. Absolutely, I would love to fight him again. But... For everyone calling, oh, it's a re- rematch. You need to do that rematch. For what? For what? Was he the champion? No, I was the champion, and I went out there defending my belt. So why? Why does Kobe? Why does Kobe deserve a rematch? Because it was just such a fun fight, and people want to see it again, see the blood again. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do that down the line when I feel like I want to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, on the bigger and better. Like I want to continue to defend my belt and defend my belt. So, you yeah. know, I've been ready to defend this belt since April, May. Yeah. June. Now we're looking at July. I just need somebody to, to you know, grow some, grow a pair of balls and step in there and, and take this L. July on Fight Island, right? Is that what you're hearing? Flying to an island somewhere? July in my backyard. I don't care where it's at. Anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. 
All right, last question for you this weekend. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, Tyron Woodley fighting Gilbert Burns. What do you think of that fight? Mm -hmm. And again, I mentioned that you know Gilbert uh, pretty well. If he were to win that fight and look great, um, you know, I've asked him this question too. What are the chances of, of, of you two fighting? What is, what is your relationship when it comes to that? No, it, our relationship is good. It's not, um, you know, Gilbert's always been the guy that I've trained with, you know, respect very, very well. He, he's similar to me. We're, you know, we're kind of, we're, we do the same thing. We just, we love what we do. We go, we train and we love our families, you know, and that's what it is. Like it's understood whenever that ever came, whenever that ever comes up, when we have to fight, who am I to tell a man that you can't change the landscape of your, your, your life, your family's life? You know, absolutely mm -hmm. not. I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to give him a title shot or anything like that. No, that's just that's silly. You know, me, him, and, and Vicente, that's kind of, we're kind of in that same boat. If it comes down to what we have to fight, absolutely, we're going to fight. And then at the end of the night, I'll buy you a beer if you want beer or drink, you know? Mm -hmm. like, simple as that. You know, no, no bad blood in any sense uh, of all that. If we have to fight, then we have to take care of business. Yeah. You think he beats Tyron this weekend? I, I think... <laughs> Like, I think a lot of people are sleeping on Gilbert with this yeah. fight, which is, is a very big mistake. Um, if Tyron doesn't come correct, it's going to be a bad night. That's all I'm going to say. Tyron doesn't come correct, it's going to be a really bad night. Really bad yeah. night because Gilbert is just um, – he's starting to hit his stride. And, and that's a dangerous man when you, that you have in front of you when he's starting to feel it and he's confident in himself and, and he's – it's a very, very dangerous man. So yeah. I, I guarantee you, Tyron doesn't come on his P's and Q's. He's going to be very disappointed. Yeah. All right, man. One last thing before we let you go. And we appreciate the time. You've been gracious with it as always. Uh, you know, these days they can cut up these videos however they want. They can throw them up on social media. You know, these things go viral, this and that, everything else. I want yeah. you to look at the camera and give a message to Jorge Masvidal. And then I want you to give one to Conor McGregor. Uh, anything that you want to tell him. I mean, this is... You're looking for a fight in July. Neither of those two have a fight currently booked. They've said some things, you know, Connor is talking about the GOAT and Jorge Masvidal is, is talking about a potentially BMF fight, but you two have, you know, squared off and, and had, you know, your history together. What do you have to say to Jorge Masvidal today? What do you have to say to Connor McGregor? This is what I have to say to both guys is both guys now are champions of Twitter, typing stuff up on Twitter. That's what both guys are champions of on Twitter in the history who has ever said no to a title shot I'm that only guy I'm that boogeyman that these guys are saying no to a title shot for and they better remain quiet because we've seen with Jorge Masvidal you've had the opportunity April 18th you had the opportunity you said no May 9th you had the opportunity you said no June you said no now July you want to fight Nate a fight that wasn't competitive you know and Connor you said you want to be the king of the 170 division now you're quiet so you know what? Just remain quiet. That's what I expect. Remain quiet, both of you guys. Remain quiet because I'm giving, I'm giving both of you guys a shot, and none of you guys want to take it. So stay quiet and let the king go on down the street doing his thing. Come on, appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for the time. You look good. I'm sure underneath your shredded pecs are looking I mean, big. I mean, you want to see it, you know what? You don't got to do it. it. You want to see it, Brett? I got you. I got you, Brett. I got you. What's up? There it see, is. Long we, long we I knew it. I knew it, man. Off season tomorrow. Shredded as ever. <laughs> My man. Hey, I've been ready. I've been ready. This is. I've been ready to. This is fight shape. I can make weight this weekend if I. You need look to. ready. I'm ready. You look I'm ready, ready, man. Fight Island, Backyard, wherever the case is. Apex Center in Vegas. Let's go. Get Kamaru boost the fight, please. <laughs> Let's make it happen. All right, All champ. Right, appreciate man. the time, man. Have a good one.